Hey, thanks for joining us today on this Monday afternoon. I'm meteorologist Taylor Cox, and in true Monday fashion, I think a lot of people are most likely being impacted by the AWS outage. Well, our Restream or the uh, platform that we stream on is also being impacted, so I'm going to do something really quick. I'm going to check my audio. Can you guys hear me out there? It, we, we can hear. We've got audio, we've got a live stream. It's a good Monday. All right, let's talk about your headlines today. And honestly, in the rush of trying to get this forecast up, you guys, we didn't even turn on all of our lights. It is true Monday here. All right, you're going to see a little change in the graphics with these lights turning on. And let's get into your headlines. We've got a wet week ahead. While we may have a drier start for the moment, we will have more rain coming into the central portion of the country as we head into the later portion of the work week. We're going to talk about that and the flooding risks that come with that. We're also going to head out to the Caribbean Sea where we do have an 80% chance for our next named storm. Melissa is on the docket. It's going to be a tropical storm most likely within the next few days. But will it get to hurricane strength? We'll talk about that here in just a few minutes. And temperatures, with all of these different low pressure systems and cold fronts coming in, your temperatures are going to do this up and down and up and down. But before we get to that forecast, I do want to talk about that OU football giveaway. This Saturday, OU plays Ole Miss. And after a great win against South Carolina on last Saturday, we're excited about this game and we want to give away two free tickets to this game. It includes a parking pass, a champion's tailgate access. If you've never been there, it's like free food and drinks and it's great. So what you do is you go to hailtrace.com slash OU dash tickets to get your free tickets and we'll talk about exactly how to enter at that website. So again, hailtrace.com slash OU dash tickets to get your free tickets and we'll put a link to that in the comments section as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at yesterday's storm reports. We did have a pretty active late Saturday and early Sunday. Tons of wind reports across the U.S., anywhere from the southern portion of Illinois into Indiana and even down to the south into places like northern Louisiana and Mississippi. Again, that was Saturday into Sunday. I know that we did have at least one EF1 out of this just outside of Hot Springs, Arkansas on the eastern or the western, excuse me, western side of Arkansas, just across the Oklahoma-Arkansas state line. This continued to shift up to the north and west, north and east, excuse me with some high wind, and that's really all that we got was that high wind. That hail risk was very, very low yesterday. And very low again today as well. We've got a cold front moving through the U.S., so that's, uh, we've got a nice low pressure system. We're gonna talk more about that here in just a few minutes, but that's going to be our big weather maker for today. We've got a few showers and storms continuing across the upper northeast. Just a few showers across Miami, but more showers for Florida later on today. And then we've got a few more showers moving into places like Rapid City and even down to the south. So we'll talk about those areas for rain today. Other than that, it feels like fall out there. Thankfully, those temperatures have finally cooled down a little bit. And for places like Oklahoma, you're going to see even cooler temperatures tomorrow. 69 in KC, 56 in Denver, a very, very comfortable 56 up in Denver. But what about that hail risk? Well, it's pretty low out there. Yeah, it's a very low risk for hail, mainly down to the south. And we'll talk about if we were to see any hail today, where we would see that. Again, it's going to be a very, very low risk, not only today, but also tomorrow. Things could change by the end of the work week, but right now we're getting a break from any severe weather. So no significant hail expected for today. Your max hail size, if we get any hail at all, I was right in between. Should I go nickel or quarter today? I think things could surprise us down to the south, maybe getting up to quarter size hail, but I think it's very, very unlikely. Most likely nothing larger than the size of a dime, maybe nickel. All righty, moving on here. No significant wind expected. Your tornado risk for today also very, very low. So no significant tornado risk either. Where are we going to see that rain? Well, I want you to watch here. This is your nationwide view for rain over the next 24 hours. 
you're going to see that low pressure system right here. And if nothing else, just watch that spin of the low pressure system as we go through the map here. What this does is this low pressure system with a cold front that's trailing down to the south, it's going to bring some rain across the uh, north and midwestern portion of the U.S. So we're talking about places like Minnesota, South Dakota, North Dakota, it could get a little bit of snow as well up there, and then just some light rain across places like St. Louis and even southeastern Oklahoma. Dallas, maybe you're getting some very light rain tomorrow during your early morning commute. But other than that, again, we are not expecting anything severe from this unless we get just a little bit of a convection in northern Louisiana right here. If we are going to get any hail today, it'll be right in this area. But I think it's such a low chance I didn't even make a hail map. I'm not betting on that hail risk for today. We've got another chance to see a little bit of wet weather up in places like Rapid City and Casper, Wyoming. Again, maybe a strike of thunder, strike of lightning, rumble of thunder. But for the most part, we are going to stay non-severe with these storms later on this evening as well. Alrighty, moving on here, let's talk about that flood risk that does come into play later on this week. This is something that I want you to keep an eye on, especially through the center portion of the U.S. Not today, not tomorrow, but by Thursday and Friday, this may be something that you're keeping an eye on. Anytime that we see a four, five day outlook for severe weather or flooding, we have to be weather aware. So that's exactly what we're seeing by the end of the work week. We're going to keep an eye on this as we get more weather, more wet weather moving through here. But again, the severe risks are pretty low. Monday, no severe risk. Tuesday, not even a marginal risk. It's a level one. Wednesday, very, very similar story here. I think things start to change on Thursday. So if you look at our long-term radar here, you can see that we've got that cold front sweeping through today with some cooler temperatures behind it. Yeah, it's going to feel like fall by early tomorrow morning. We actually turned on our fireplace last night. It was very, very comfortable. We turned on our fireplace and uh, got to enjoy some of those cooler temperatures. You're going to get to do that again tonight and into tomorrow. Then as we head into the middle of the work week, things start to warm up a little bit. Okay, so those temperatures back on that climb back up. We get more rain right in the center of the U.S. So again, by Thursday and Friday, we've got some rainy conditions, not only for the center of the U.S., but also up to the north as we just have this round after round after round of storms moving through here. Now, unfortunately, I can't see the comments section today, again, because of those technical difficulties that we were having at the very beginning of the forecast. However, if you do have any questions, put those in the Facebook or YouTube comments, and I'm pretty good about getting back after the forecast and responding to those comments. So let us know where you're watching from today. Let us know what you're, uh, what you're watching for for the rest of the work week. Are you watching for severe weather? Maybe you're up to the northwest watching for snow, or maybe you're even watching for that flooding risk as we head into the end of this work week. So once again, a very low risk for severe weather for now, but wait until the end of this week. We'll probably have our eye on at least a marginal risk. We'll have to keep an eye on it. Alrighty, let's take a look at our satellite view because that's going to highlight that next round for a tropical storm. As this comes back into view here, what we're watching for is a cluster of storms that's sitting down in the Caribbean right now. Uh, it's actually this cluster of storms. This is the Saturday view. Let's fast forward. Your next tropical storm name is going to be Melissa. Now, Melissa has an 80% chance to form. It's not formed yet. Right now, actually, it's got a name of AL98. So that's its name right now. It basically means that the uh, National Hurricane Center is interested in this cluster, this disorganized cluster of storms right here. And it has an 80% chance to form into a tropical storm over the next probably three to four days. I'll probably give it four days to form into that next tropical storm, that next named storm. Right now, we've got winds at about 40 miles an hour pretty disorganized at the moment. It's moving to the west at about 20 miles an hour, but it is expected to slow down. And that's going to be very, very pivotal to the formation of Melissa, because if this thing can slow down, it's going to have more time to organize. And that's what we need to get this to a tropical storm strength. Winds, pretty impressive. However, we need that organization to actually classify it as a tropical storm. So we'll see if that happens over the next few days. Again, 80% chance to see that happen here. 
After that uh, formation happens, after we get that tropical storm, will it intensify to a hurricane? Very unlikely. Most of our models are actually keeping this below hurricane, below that category one strength. Most of our models are saying tropical storm. And actually most of our models are bringing this farther into the Caribbean, but then we'll bring it back out to the east eventually. So we'll have to keep an eye on that as well. At this point, a lot is unknown right here. So we're not exactly sure what's going to happen. We need more time and more information to know exactly what's going to happen. So we will be keeping you updated on that over the next few days. Again, the next name storm will be Tropical, Mo tropical Storm Melissa. Uh, we still have plenty of time to get more tropical storms in here. I know that the later portion of October and early November is not always the most active time of year. However, we saw this last year where we saw how many name storms? One, two, three, four named storms at the very end of October and November, maybe even five with Nadine. So we could absolutely still get some named storms in here over the next few days. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Other than that, the main impactful weather that you're going to feel over the next few days is going to be those cooler temperatures. You're going to see those temperatures go down and then right back up as we head into the later portion of the work week. Enjoy that fall weather while you can because it's not going to last for long. Temperatures are likely to be right about average, if not slightly above average, as we head into the middle and end of this week. And there's your forecast. What about temperatures? Let's talk about your numbers here. Ooh, tomorrow morning, mid 50s. I'll take it. That looks nice. Mid 70s tomorrow afternoon. Here's your warm up. We get back into the upper 70s and maybe even some 80s moving into places like Texas as we head into the middle of the week. And by Thursday, uh, there's your 60s, 70s, 83 in Dallas. But the rest of the US, 50s and 60s, we'll take it. That's not too bad. What about the end of October? We're talking about the 25th through the 29th at this point. It does look like we have a really good chance to stay above average. So this is your likelihood for temperatures to be warmer than normal. I know you see the reds and you think 90 degrees. No, it's not gonna be hot. It's just going to be above average. So let's say your average for this time of the year in Chicago was 65, you have a really good chance to be warmer than 65. So that's what this map is telling you right here. We're also looking at wetter than average conditions as we head into the end of this month as well. So we'll have to keep an eye on that round after round after round of rain and maybe even some potential severe weather. So make sure that you're coming back day to day for your next forecast. Hey, we are also going to be posting about our transition into La Nina. Did you guys know that? We transitioned out of the neutral phase and into La Nina, and we're going to be breaking down what exactly that means for our winter outlook. What does that mean in general? What is La Nina? We're going to be posting all about that on our social media, so make sure that you're following us over there on all forms of social media to take a look at that um, breakdown later on today. We'll be posting that in the next few hours here. So follow us on all forms of social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok, and give us a call if you're interested in a hail, wind, or tornado map at 855-334-4245 or email us at info at hailtrace.com for more information or even head over to our website, hailtrace.com. All right, thanks for joining us.